Welcome back to Taylor's Attack, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we've got our first hands-on impressions of this year's iPhone 10 Plus and iPhone 9. Dummies, not the, not the real thing. So yeah, while well, a lot of you might be like, what's the point of just holding dummy phones that don't have actually anything in them, they don't turn on, it actually is very helpful for me because it lets me know the different size options that we're going to be getting this year, how they compare to the already existing 5.8-inch iPhone 10, and with these dummy models, they even give us an idea of how much thicker the bezels are on the cheaper, more budget-friendly iPhone 9 compared to the much more premium $1,000 costing iPhone 10 Plus. Sadly, yes, the Chinese manufacturer who made these broke my camera lens, but that's okay because I don't take pictures with it. And it's even got a magnet shaking around in there, but these are visual aids for you guys. So first impressions of these mock-ups is for one, they definitely screwed up with the iPhone 9 because I think it must've been cheaper for them to make it like this, but the budget iPhone is not going to have a stainless steel bumper. So they got the 10 plus right. In fact, I'll be getting a 10 plus. That's what I'll be switching to. Definitely getting the silver with the stainless steel border. So this is pretty dang close to the real thing. Thing. This, however, is not, because while, yes, there will be a silver iPhone 9, it will have an aluminum edge, not a stainless steel one, and they must have missed that or didn't want to put in the time for it. So, yeah, this one is not terribly close to what the actual thing will look like, other than the form factor, the bezels, and the single-lens camera setup. It's getting that correct. But holding the two for a while now and trying to imagine iOS 12 running on these things, I very quickly discovered I love that 10 Plus display. It's enormous. It's by far biggest display we've ever had on an iPhone and personally if it can fit in my pocket I'm okay with its size because I have huge hands and the 10 plus is not going to be terribly friendly to one-handed users reachability will definitely be turned on by default but I am okay with that I kind of like a phone that you have to hold it differently to access different parts of the display I don't expect everyone to like that but it's just something I have a preference with I like having big screens and taking them with me so this is exactly what I've always wanted for my iPhone 10 is just a larger size option and as soon as I started holding around this dummy model even though it's a dummy and it doesn't work as soon as I went back to the actual real 5.8 inch iPhone 10 I immediately went oh this this is really small so just like that it's convinced me and I'm already sold on this new six and a half inch OLED display and I can't wait to see what type of utilization Apple puts on there for iOS 12 but then we come over to the budget model iPhone 9 and you know what I've discovered something I didn't really think about in all the talk we've had about these two new iPhone sizes these guys are very, very close in screen size. Yes, the 10 Plus is slightly bigger, but it definitely isn't by much. And I have an unpopular opinion that I haven't heard around the internet very much, so I'm totally gonna be wrong about this. But while I know everyone is anticipating this to be the best-selling iPhone of the year, half of the unit sales going to this, I actually think this screen size is still very, very large. And if you pretend the 10 Plus didn't exist for a second, this is still going to be the largest display we've ever had on an iPhone. And I think it actually might be a little bit too much for people. Holding it now and comparing it to the 10 Plus, I'm realizing that this might be like uncomfortably large for a lot of people out there. And many people might think that, well, this is cheap, but I don't want to display at that size. And in all honesty, I'm not saying that no one is going to like the iPhone 9 screen size or no one is going to use the iPhone 9. I'm just saying that its screen size might actually be a little bit too much and persuade more people for getting this updated but slightly cheaper 5.8 inch OLED iPhone. This is a very, very comfortable screen size, and it's been very close to universally liked in terms of what form factor they went with. So many people got this iPhone 10 last year, there was only one size option. And now, of course, this year, they're distorting that and diversifying the lineup so that people who want the biggest iPhone 10 possible, they have that. For people who don't want to spend too much money, they have that. And then, of course, keeping around that premium dual camera, that OLED display for the people who want the best overall iPhone, but just don't need a six and a half inch display in their pocket, they have that option. But yeah, holding it in person, it's starting to make me think, while yes, there definitely is a market for this, I'm still not entirely convinced it will be the best selling one. Similar to the 5C, 5S situation, I think that everyone's anticipating it to sell the best because it's more affordable and it has some of the newer features like the no home button and face ID while compromising on things like the display or the camera, the materials overall that it's made of. While they compromise on there to make it cheaper, I still think that the screen size might be a 
little bit too much for people and it might persuade them to go back to the 5.8 inch OLED 10, no matter how many cool colors this may come with. So that's summing up my opinions on the iPhone 9, but many of you have probably seen this already, but there have been many reports that are saying this year's version of iPhone are going to be supporting... <sighs> Apple Pencil. I I hope not. I know many of you out there are like, what's, what gives? What's the big problem? Why not support Apple Pencil? Isn't it kind of ridiculous right now that they only work on the iPad? Maybe Apple took it a little too harsh when they saw the new Ingenious ad, but mostly because this stylus is enormous and optimized for an iPad experience, and that's okay. If you look at its size comparison just to the 10 Plus, it's larger than the device itself, and using your 10 Plus with a stylus like this just looks ridiculous and a pen that has this length and weight is really supposed to mimic an actual pen experience usually with a stylus on a phone things are smaller things are thinner and i feel like these don't optimize for each other very well not to mention you would have to pair the apple pencil by docking it with the iphone and holding it like a lollipop and i already have complaints with the apple pencil as it is it's ridiculous to me that they haven't updated it they could very easily remove this stupid charging technique of plugging it into the ipad with a simple button on the top that works like the button on the back of your AirPods case, you know, and you just hold it and then the W1 chip appears on the iPad. That pairing process that we have with AirPods, just put that on this and then let this support air power, let this support a little inductive charging stand or something like that. Just not the way it is now, it's just stupid and they haven't changed it since 2015. And to say that, oh, all these Apple pencils that we're not gonna update, we're not gonna change anything now, we're bringing that support to the iPhone, I have my doubts. Also because last year before the iPhone 10 was released a bunch of reports were also claiming that the apple pencil was going to work on the iphone 10 that never happened similarly a lot of reports now saying that this year's iphones are going to have a 512 gigabyte option why do you need that much i can't figure it out i'm definitely not getting that storage option but once again i do have my doubts because last year there were several reports claiming the same thing this year's iphone gonna have a half terabyte but then it didn't sometimes there's a lot of last minute leaks or last minute reports that are just trying to get clicks that definitely sounds like like one of them. Apple Pencil support in half a terabyte, but it also just doesn't sound like Apple. But of course, I could be wrong and this might end up happening. And I guess then I'll have a purpose for my Apple Pencil again. I can use it with my 10 Plus to like scroll through the apps, I guess. But yes, overall, these dummy phones are really, really cool. They give you a glimpse of the future. And after holding both of them, I can definitely say I prefer the 10 Plus. That's my go-to phone this year. As soon as it comes out, that will be my daily driver. And I'm glad the budget phone is there for people who want want that phone and just need iOS on optimized hardware with an okay display and okay camera because those things aren't as important to you. I'm glad it's there, but I like my dual camera. I like the extra screen size you get with the 10 plus, even if it's not that much, I want the biggest display possible. And it'll be impressive given the price points this year are rumored to start at $1,000 for the 10 plus, $700 for the iPhone 9, which is by no means a budget phone, but in relation to everything else, it's a bit cheaper. And then $900 for the 5 5.8 inch iPhone 10. So same phone as last year, but $100 cheaper and it'll probably be getting a better camera, better chip, which is a great update if something is faster and cheaper. To the people who didn't get the iPhone 10 last year, it'll be a good thing that you waited. And just remember, before you spend $1,000 on these phones, you won't be getting that lightning to headphone jack dongle. I'm sorry. So I guess this really isn't worth it. Let me know which one you guys are planning on getting down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.